Welcome to Influencers, where we bring you the people that influence our city, our community, and our state. Today, I'm so honored to have Congresswoman Dina Titus, great friend of the Latin Chamber of Commerce. Welcome, Congresswoman. Well, thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. Yeah, I'm so glad that you're here, and you're always available to this chamber, and I really do appreciate it. Well, we have a good relationship, a good partnership. We do. We have a great friendship, and uh, apparently we, I even have a photo in D.C., I'm being told. That's right. In you your have, office. You have to come back and see us. I, very proudly displayed. Very soon, and I have one here very proudly displayed. With that, tell us about yourself. How did you get to Nevada? Well, I came in 1977 to teach at UNLV. I grew up in South Georgia, so this was a big move after graduate school. And then I taught there for 35 years, so I have a lot of students all around this valley. Wow, and that's where the accent's from. Uh, that's right. It's genetic. I can't get rid of it. I love it. Just keep it. <laughs> Who has had the greatest influence on you? Well, Both career-wise and yeah. personal. Well, you know, a lot of people say a teacher set them on their path, and I think that's true. I think teachers are just so important and great influencers. I would say perhaps my grandfather, who was an immigrant from Greece, wow. and he was in the restaurant business all his life and had a big table in the back of the little cafe on the square in the town, and so everybody from the courthouse would come over and talk politics and drink coffee and he was so proud to be American and so proud of democracy and you know the things that you share with Greece and I think he instilled that in me. Well that's beautiful and and tell us you've done a lot for Las Vegas you've done a lot for the state tell us about your journey to become a congresswoman. Well, I taught political science, and I thought, well, you know, I study it, I write it, I teach it, why not do it? And so an opportunity came to run for the state legislature in uh, 88, and I ran for the state senate and served there for 20 years, and then that led to the role in Congress. Feel happy about it? I do. I wouldn't take anything for it. You know, people say, how can you stand what's going on? And I always say it's better to be in the fight than on the sidelines. More with our Congresswoman in a moment. Thank you. Welcome back to Influencers, today with Congresswoman Dina Titus. Congresswoman, tell us about Congress Tell us stuff that Congress does that maybe people don't understand. Well, Congress doesn't have a very high approval rating. You know, people think that it's deadlocked, that nothing much gets done. It's very partisan. All of that's true. Uh, my mother thinks I'm doing a good job, so that's one person. We love her. <laughs> Thank you. So, you know, they think mostly Congress passes laws and operates in Washington. But our definition of a congressman is really to be a representative. So we put a lot of influence on constituent service. We help with immigration cases, Social Security, Medicare veterans. Once a lady called, uh, I had to send my husband over to her house with a ladder to get the cat out of the tree. So wow. we, we do just about everything. Yeah. And and I can attest to that because certainly on immigration, we've had to reach out to your office and okay. you've been there in a heartbeat. So we certainly appreciate that. Tell us uh, from a Congress standpoint, how do you help the small business community here? Well, I'm a member of the Small Business Caucus in Congress because I think that's a very important part of this district, especially in the minority community. You know, this is the most ethnically diverse district. We have a large Hispanic population, a lot of small businesses, large Asian population, a lot of small businesses. So any way that I can help with uh, tax issues, mm -hmm. with encouraging investment, international investment too, bringing more tourists here and investors like with v certain kinds of visas. Kind of like what we did last night. Exactly. So we're we're all over that because it is important, and I believe small business is the key to a booming economy. Well, we certainly know that, I think, here in Las Vegas. You do uh, a great job here at the Chamber uh, helping with that as well. And I appreciate that very much. We, we understand here that, you know, we have to have a thriving small business community. If we do, then there's dollars being rotated in our community, which helps everyone. Well, that's right. More people are employed. They have more that's money right. in their pocket, and it all goes around. How can the small business community take more advantage of your office? Well, we hold some workshops. You know, we've done some together That's with right. you uh, to get the words out about how you can get government contracts, for example, how you can navigate the new changes in the tax law. So let's work together on uh, the chamber and us. Maybe we can co-sponsor some public outreach, public meetings to draw the small businesses in. You can take that to the bank. We will do that. Great. 
More with our Congresswoman in a moment. Welcome back to Influencers. Immigration. I want to talk a little immigration. Obviously very near and dear to my heart. Yes. And very important to this chamber. Uh, although we represent the small business community, we represent people here. Yes. And my founder, Otto Merida, taught me that. That we're also going to be in the forefront of, of caring about people here. Certainly, uh, immigration is something that's very frustrating to me. Mm -hmm. I can't believe that we're still talking about it. We yeah. still have no immigration reform. And, and quite frankly, I'm disgusted mm -hmm. by the recent uh, immigration issues. Uh, I can't believe that nobody had a better plan. Oh. Uh, ripping you know, families apart, mm -hmm. children. And to me, I don't care if it's D or R. It's disgusting. And uh, we should have had a better plan. And uh, so I, I want to, you know, I, I know this is near and dear to your heart. It We've is. had a lot of conversations about immigration. Tell us what your plans are in Congress mm -hmm. regarding immigration. Well, I've been on every immigration reform bill that's been passed since we had the first DACA bill 10 years ago. Uh, we have written letters, we have protested on the lawn, we have had sit-ins to try to get the other side to bring a bill to the floor. Uh, and instead, we keep having these administrative policies that, like you say, rip families apart, don't deal with the dreamer issue, end TPS for people, temporary protective status. Uh, it's just horrendous. We we need something comprehensive that secures our borders but pro provides a pathway to citizenship and does not divide families. That no tolerance where you rip children away from their parents, little babies, we've just been disgusted by that as well. And we reached out to be sure there were no children here in Nevada because we're close to the border, Arizona, California, so that we could help reunite them. And they said that's not the case. They're in 17 states, but not Nevada. But we're on top of that every day. And here at home, we help with visa issues, ICE issues, DACA applications. We're, we're there. And how much influence does Congress have on immigration? Well, we're the ones who should pass the legislation, but right now they've kind of abdicated their role and left it to the president. And you heard the president say just in the last day or so that he'd be willing to shut down government if he doesn't get money for this wall. And this wall does not make us safer. It does not solve the problem. I've never seen a wall somebody couldn't crawl under or climb over if they were determined for a better life. So that is just misdirected. I don't see why they can't be two separate issues. Right. We have a problem now why can't we fix and, and have comprehensive immigration reform and you know I don't think anybody's advocating for not having security in our country exactly. everybody has a right to that that's right but I, I think we should have immigration reform that would help a lot of the problem well I think that's right we put that first then some of this other stuff will take care of itself besides we have we are more secure than we've ever been with more border patrol more uh, high-tech things along the border you just don't need a wall yeah technology I think is a, a better mm -hmm. use actually I'm always curious, uh, what's the interaction between your office and the governor's office? Do you work yeah. well with the governor? We do. We've been friends since way back when he was in the legislature. Uh, we work together on things like Yucca Mountain. We've worked together on the Medicare expansion that created Obamacare. And we work together on immigration because, you know, he's from an immigrant family himself, so he has appreciation Absolutely. for that. So we have a very good working relationship. Speaking of Yucca Mountain, how do you feel about Yucca Mountain? What's your stance on Yucca Mountain? Well, I've been opposed to it since it was first put in place in 1982, back when I was at the university. We keep fighting. I think it should be consent-based. Put it where people want it. Right now, Texas says they take a temporary storage That's right. They place. actually want to take it. Let them have it. Let them have it. Yeah. We'll be back with our last segment with our great Congresswoman, Dina Titus. segment with Congresswoman Dina Titus. Thanks again for being here. Oh, it's been a pleasure. Congresswoman, tell us how the Hispanic community has benefited from your hard work. 
Well, they tell me that I'm a member of the family, and I hope they feel that way because I certainly do. This is a very important part of my constituency. They know where I am on immigration. They know where I am on health care. We are out in the community at ribbon cuttings, meeting right. with you. Uh, so we'll it's see not, you Saturday. <laughs> exactly. And so, uh, and they, our uh, office uh, has Spanish speakers. We do outreach at the East Las Vegas Community Center one day a week where we have office hours to help people with problems. So I think that they know that they're not just an afterthought, right. that they are critical to this district. And I certainly hear it back from, from our members and we hear that. They, they do appreciate your staff and the ability to speak Spanish. I think that's important. Thank How you. can the Hispanic business community be more engaged with your office? Well, I think through the chamber is very important. I mean, y'all do a very good job of helping us disseminate information to the community. And when you gather members, I always love to come and talk to them and hear what they're thinking and what their needs. So if we can just continue and grow this partnership, I think that'll be critical. Yeah, and we are going to grow that partnership. It's uh, it's very important to me, and it's very important to my members. So we will definitely do that. What's your future? I, I know you're a congresswoman today, and you you don't look like you're slowing down a bit. <laughs> well, that's good. And that's good. That's good for all of us. But what is your future? What do you want to be doing? Well. I you never say never to anything that opportunity might present itself. But right now, I think I have the best district in the country. Certainly the most exciting, you say you're from Las Vegas, people know where that is and they want to visit there. And we say if it's happening in Nevada, it's happening in District 1. It's the heart of this valley. It includes the Strip, the airport, major hospitals, the university, community college. It is a great microcosm for what's going on, and I just love being its representative. I'm honored to be its representative. Well, we're honored to have you as our friend. Thank you so and much. And as our Congresswoman, and I do appreciate you coming in today. Thank you. I want to thank Congresswoman Dina Titus for always being available, always coming to visit with us. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Influencers. Until the next Influencers, stay motivated and stay inspired. Thank you so much. That thank, was you. Awesome. thank you. Thank you.